All right, we have returned. So, um, it is a kind of like a classic kind of like uh, Amazon riverboat, you might imagine. So it's kind of puffing along, throwing out like smoke from the back, kind of coming down the river. <clears throat> the initial parts of the river are very much more uh, developed, I will say. So you can see how there is uh, large tracts of area uh, where... Uh, There's kind of like farmland in various areas, and you can see some roads and stuff. But the you can also see signs of jungle and areas that are much more wild. It's like not necessarily like the slowest going, but you are kind of chugging along at a very uh, simple pace. The um, <coughs> river itself is fairly busy in this area. <coughs> there are some like larger vessels that seem to be doing things, and, um, and plenty of smaller vessels. You can see mixtures of people working along the shore. Uh, you can see some of the uh, like crustacean people in places that seem to be like working with local uh, human fishermen, uh, seemingly setting nets and stuff. Um, the area around here definitely seems to be much more settled. And uh, as you kind of run through the day, uh, kind of chugging along, um, things are still have that kind of uh, settled appearance and feel to them in comparison to like other areas that you uh, kind of expected. You, you, maybe you expected a little bit of this, maybe you didn't. It's hard to really say. But nonetheless, you push onward and forward deeper into uh, the jungle. And it, about evening time, uh, the open areas of the river kind of break away, and it becomes much more... It, the, the, the jungle seems to start eating things up. So you kind of got about uh, halfway on your journey, uh, deeper to the uh, south, um, towards... Oh, it's right. Um, I am forgetting the names of things. Uh, Mangalore. I said it earlier, and I should remember it, but... <clears throat> Memory, what's the point of that? Um, in the evening, um, <coughs> the ship will actually, like, kind of, uh, find a kind of inlet at the side of the river a little bit of one on one of the turns and actually dock for the evening like just kind of like uh throw some ropes onto the shore uh kind of hanging off of it as kind of night falls um scrog wondered we could travel at night mine and the captain's eyes are good enough and the captain uh, does not need to rest like the rest of us but uh still very dangerous might not see other travelers until too late. Very Hard well. spot dangers. We will anchor at night. Uh, you can hear all kinds of sounds of strange creatures, <coughs> crashing trees, and noises coming from the jungles. Up until now, things have not felt very wild. Um, you'll all kind of settle into a sleep eventually. <coughs> you'll find that there is plenty of stinging insects, so setting up those bug nets kind of around your uh, hammocks actually helps a lot. There are so many bugs even around here now. This place is certainly like moist, wild, kind of like just feels um, like nature controls the area. Um, it's a little past midnight, and all of you will be uh, and I will note that, like, Scrog will prepare some, uh, on the grill up top, uh, some kind of, like, uh, fish that he managed to catch, a couple fish, and <coughs> put together some kind of, uh, meal for everybody. Um, the gnomes are very friendly towards dinner, um, they, they, they chat about various things, uh, seems like, uh, they're a team that comes from... Um, Waterdeep originally. 
they're a uh, they went to a college there uh, all together um, and uh, Felengar ended up uh, getting a professorship in um, uh, Baldur's Gate uh, and uh, it was the opportunity for one of the local uh, nature networks uh, to fund this expedition. His research was into, as he says, he's botany and medicine. Uh, so he studies various plants to see about their uh, med medicinal uses in the modern day. <laughs> and all the gnomes are relatively friendly. As I said, there's like, there's actually eight of them, <coughs> other than Felengar. Um, and if you want their names, I will give you a list of their names, because I don't have all of their names, and I will have to get the rest of them with a random name generator. I didn't know if you wanted those all or not. I will probably still give them to you. Um, in a little bit. Gnome name generator. I'll just grab that. <laughs> grab a few more. Um, anyway, uh, as I said, though, around midnight... I'm more there. Uh, in the other ones? Uh, seven others. Okay. Uh, uh, two women, uh, uh, you don't uh, have to give us names. Okay. <laughs> Yet. <laughs> okay. Um, probably not until they become important. Gotcha. Um, yeah, cause I might just let them get eaten. <clears throat> there will be a large crashing and splashing noise that's much louder than you ever heard, and the boat will kind of rock. Uh, what the fuck was that? I don't, I don't think that, that was supposed to happen. I'm mm -hmm. gonna run to the edge and mm -hmm. look overboard, see if I can spot anything. Um massive creature is crossing the river. It seems to be a small group of them. Um, nature check if anyone has it. I can try. <coughs> Looking. I'll try. Okay, uh, Vercel, uh, you and, uh, my brain just keeps breaking today. Uh, you and Mishka, uh, recognize that these are indeed a type of dinosaur. Uh, they are apatosaurs. So they are sauropods of the, uh, longer body. Uh, it seems to be a kind of family group of about a dozen of them crossing the river and then kind of moving in amongst the trees. It's very interesting to see them move into the trees as they, with even their large bodies, seem to just kind of like squish in between the trees almost. The trees almost kind of like bend out of the way. Like It seems to like uh, the jungle's adapted to having large creatures move through it here. The trees, the trees stand more often. There's a lot of flexibility even in the large trees here to allow these uh, great beasts uh, to push through and travel. It's uh, quite an impressive sight to see. Um, kind of a little um, disconcerting, I would say, but not so much that it kind of like throws you off. It's more of like a whoa... Uh, um, uh, Felengar and his crew will have gotten up and will actually have some recording of this. You know, like one of them, the one with the that seems to be the camera person, uh, will be recording this entire thing. Fascinating! It's so wonderful to see them in the wild like this. Normally, you just see beasts like this in the dinosaur races, nowadays. Hmm. Anyway. Back to bed, everyone. The show seems to be over. 
what are you folks doing? This just happened. It was loud. It was disturbing. Uh, it was louder than the... You, know, you guys got used to street traffic. You know, it's like one of those things. Is there's probably a lot of noise in the city at all times of night. <laughs> you can get used to that kind of thing. This is like, there's a lot of sounds of nature, and this was just like, uh, you know, a train coming by, kind of like loud, as they're making, they're making loud noises and just crashing through everything. Oh, I hate it already. Ah, uh, sounds of nature. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, you lived out in this kind of stuff? For most of my life. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna stick to the city. I think. Yeah. Generally, where I'm from, creatures aren't generally that big. Although there are some. Too much. Well, you can head back to bed, unless there's something else you want to do in particular. I'm gonna head back to bed. I'm done with this shit. Yeah. Sleep seems to be the best option. You know, if there's anything else right now. Okay. Um... Yeah, so things will kind of quiet down after that. Um, in the morning, uh, you'll all kind of get up as the ship will actually be underway uh, by the time you wake up. Um, again, like, it seems like uh, 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 Scrog uh, cooks stuff at various points in time, and he once again, uh, you know, has together some kind of uh, basic breakfast uh for you got for all you folks to uh enjoy some dinosaur bacon sure more turkey <laughs> jerky is always good oh, i wish i could get more jerky around here <coughs> I, I i will try I will try some of the sporm. Oh no. It's sort of like mutton. It's like spam is sort of like ham. Sporm. I prob I probably enjoy it. It probably smells terrible to everyone else. Oh god, yes. <laughs> uh-huh. Sporm. It's mutton-ish. That's it's mutton-ish. That could be its, its slogan. It's mutton-ish. I can't believe it's not mutton. <laughs> yes. Yes, this is accurate. No one can believe it's not mutton. No one thinks it would be mutton. Uh... <clears throat> anyway. Yeah. So, the rest of the... the Days travel heading towards. Uh, um, I'm already forgetting its name because I do that every time. Nangalore. I have to. I, I I have it on the map and I have my map on it. That Chultian map I found with the hexes. But it's like every time I go away from it to like you know reference something else, my brain just goes gone. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but the rest of the travel to Nangalore isn't too bad. You can see how, like, this area has definitely become much more overgrown. <clears throat> the farther you go on, the less boats you see. You still see occasional boats, and, uh, you get the feeling that up until, uh, the lake, you probably will see boats, uh, going along this entire path. And it won't be until you hit the lake itself, uh, that the things will indeed kind of clear up, at least boat-wise. Um, <clears throat> there's at a point in time that the actual, the captain will cut the engines, and uh, Scrog, Scrog will kind of go to all of you, keep quiet. 
predators. We will probably not be in danger, but it's best to not make uh, sudden dangerous moves. Um, again, like uh, Felgen uh, Felinar and his team will kind of be out, like recording. Um, he'll be like talking with like a whisper. A dangerous predator has been spotted. Um, uh, in the waters around here, um, a like you think crocodilian about half the size of your boat swims by. Hmm. Um, Do you reckon anyone would notice if I threw one of the little guys in? They're really pissing me off. Probably. We don't want to do that before we get to a, uh, to the village place. Maybe I'll look. <laughs> Maybe just like take them in the back, back with us. And then let the Naga eat it later. Yeah, I'd, I'd settle for that. Uh, after a while, it will seemingly pass. Uh, and then uh, the boat will continue its journeys. Uh, forward. <clears throat> uh. Uh, so. <coughs> Sorry, coughing. Um, eventually, though, you will arrive at the small port outside the ruins of Nang. Nangalore being very old ruins that were even ruins in the times that uh, you would have been around. Uh, but since then, um, this is probably the local like ruins tourist destination you talk about. You know, if you're talking about I'm visiting some ruins in Chult, this is probably it. You know, uh, there probably are boat tours which take up this way. You know, multi-day boat tours with like this is the part of the river that's large enough that you can get some decent-sized ships, but you've definitely seen how some of the ship sizes have shrunk. <clears throat> and there's been a number of small villages here and there that you've seen up until now. Uh, this is actually the biggest place you've seen, and it's still pretty small in comparison. <clears throat> I'd say this was smaller than the Callum port you knew in the old days. Uh, you know, hmm. back when you guys uh, knew the ancient Callum port. This is definitely a little smaller than that, even, but it's still a decent-sized place. It seems to have, like, a number of uh, the jungly, the humanoid races of the jungle here with places of setup. Um, you can see that um, the uh, guards here uh, seem to be a number of humans that are riding on uh, some kind of uh, carnivorous dinosaur's backs, kind of on patrol. Um... Uh, there definitely seems to be, like, uh, some other dinosaurs here. Like, kind of think, like, beasts of burden kind of dinosaurs around, you know? So there's maybe, like, a triceratops pulling a couple, like, a large cart or something, you know? Things like that. <coughs> this feels as, like, the last stop where civilization meets the jungle, uh, before you actually get into jungle, which, over those thousands of years you've been asleep, hasn't really changed. You know, the, the changes in the world that you've seen haven't hit this place. Mm -hmm. So, um, the, uh, of course, uh, Captain will kind of come out and be like on his little uh, text-to-speech boat. He'll be like, you can stay if you want on the boat, feel free. Uh, we'll be departing tomorrow morning, so... You can use the boat for sleeping if you need to do anything in this area. Any final supplies, get it here. I'll be back on the boat while the captain takes care of business. So if you need anything, I will be here too. <coughs> okay. What sort of things is there to, to do here? 
check out the ruins, get a tour, have some local cuisine, uh, some shopping. Mostly tourists stop by here. Only a few of us locals actually spend time here, and usually at the southern part of the uh, port of the settlement. <coughs> The ruin, he'll you know, kind of point, like, kind of in a direction. That way is the ruins. That is where the direction the captain is going. I would not recommend it for your types. Normally, travelers are not as well welcomed. Down there. Hmm. What are you guys thinking? Do we want a mini adventure, or do we want to keep watching our path? I don't know if we're trying some of the local cuisine. I've already drank beer full of shit. I'm good. But I'll follow up. First, would it be different here? Maybe we'd have fire. They could indeed have really decent and great food. You never know. They might not either. Could have really yes, good coffee. That's true. <coughs> we haven't had coffee in a minute. We gotta get some coffee. Well, uh, you certainly could, uh, you know, stop by somewhere. Uh, like this area here where the kind of ship has docked at, you can see that there's like some very simple docks. Uh, mostly for larger ships to kind of put themselves in. A lot of smaller boats just find places along the shore uh, and kind of, like, push themselves in and kind of, like, stake themselves out. There does seem to be a rudimentary system in place, as there is someone that kind of goes around and greets new ships that kind of, like, pull in, uh, but just, like, seems to be like a patrol that kind of copes up and down the coast of the river here. It's a lot more chaotic, then you'd see it most like port towns, but there does definitely seem to be um, some control to it all. Um, kind of moving in, there's like this kind of main thoroughfare that heads off to like the towards the northeast where the ruins are, and along the way, there's a couple of like uh, very simple buildings that look to be made of stone, probably stones from parts of the ruin that were completely collapsed, uh, along with wood, um, you know, kind of rebuilt. It looks as though the parts of the ruins that could not be salvaged were basically taken apart and used to make a lot of the small buildings here, at least partially. None of them seem to be completely stone or completely, like, wood or something. They seem to be mixes between the two of them. Uh, there's a number of small, like, looks like taverns, uh, a few places that probably places to stay, inns. Um, some of them look to have, like, a little bit of a modern coat to them, probably newer buildings. Others look a little bit more rustic. Uh, there's a lot of little stalls selling foods in places. A couple of sit-down restaurant type places, but they are very open air. They're like, um, uh, kind of like a small, like, kind of wooden building, uh, with like a kind of thatch roof area with tables underneath it. <clears throat> so, like, uh, again, there, you don't see any signs of, like, where the people live, you know? It's not on this thoroughfare, at least. So it might be to the south part of town where, you know, visitors aren't really asked to. Or kind of coming off of this main thoroughfare, there might be small places. But the jungle kind of flanks this, like, thoroughfare too. So you're probably, like, getting into areas that are, like, people building small huts and stuff in the little, like, small areas and amongst the edge of the jungle. It, it's crowded in a way. It hasn't been cleared out quite as much. You can see that there are areas that have definitely been cleared out, especially, like, looking to the south. There's the, 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 you can see the tree lines are a little spotty, but... <coughs> As I offer it a bit more. <coughs> it's a place you want to go. There's, like, like, kind of, like, street vendor places where you can get food. There's the sit-down restaurant kind of area. Your evening now. So, like, it's it's probably... Sun is just beginning to go down. Things haven't really, like, uh, fully fallen. Uh, there's also, like, lots of little items here. Um, the, you seem to see, like, these little statuettes of what appear to be 
Uh, a Medusa. So, I'd like to get some street food first. Okay. Um, they've probably, like, um, let's see here. There's a vendor that seems to be selling, like, uh, uh, legs of some kind of animal that, like, the, uh, like, the, like, you, you have, like, the foot and, like, the little bone, uh, like, like, the bones, like, right at the ankle are sticking out where you can kind of, like, hold on to the bone and it's got, like, the kind of, like, big thing of, like, you, you know, the, um, the calf meat then. Um, Dinosaur turkey leg. Yeah, kind of dinosaur turkey leg. <laughs> Except it still has, like, the foot attached, too. So you're supposed to, like, oh. eat the foot and the the calf. And it just have kind of, like, cleared away the meat at, like, the ankle point. <coughs> um, there's probably, like... I don't know if I quite like that. Uh, there's equivalent to, like, uh, something like a sweet potato. And, like, kind of, like, wrapped up in, like, uh, um, uh, local leaves. Uh, that seems to have been, like, kind of steamed. Um, so it's something, it's some, it's some kind of tuber that you can get there. Um, you can probably get little, uh, bowls of, uh, uh, little, like, clay bowls of, uh, no, actually, they're, they're probably little, like, equivalent to, like, a tortilla bowl or something, you know, except it's probably made with some kind of local grain, uh, something that would still be, like, it's like a flat kind of, like, uh, a flat bread kind of thing shaped into a little bowl, and there's, like, uh, kind of, like, almost like a stew of meat, uh, put in the middle of it you can get, um... And a couple other street foods. There's a place that's used to serving some kind of exotic drink. Uh, exotic fruit drink. Um, with, with, like, a display of, like, a number of types of fruits that he's apparently using. I'm gonna get a little fruit drink. Mm-hmm. Thank you. I'm getting one of the legs. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Nangalore! I hope you enjoy your stay! Please enjoy the ruins here. A tropical breeze for you to enjoy your stay in the jungle, tourist friend. This feels like the same guy we talked to before. <laughs> uh, this is actually a uh, a lizard folk. Ooh. <coughs> Oh, welcome, you. beautiful. Welcome to Mangalore. I hope you enjoy your stay. Visiting uh, your southern cousins. Uh, yes, you could say I'm visiting a friend. Excellent. Would you like the tropical drink too? Or you can try the special, the reptilian special. I know... Very often we like something with a little bit more oomph. I can see you like the uh, the uh, consonantis leg. Very good. Hmm. I will try the uh, special. Excellent. A good little bit of fruit drink does help you, but you need a certain something, and we have fresh, the freshest. Uh, he will add in some very very red liquid uh, into it. Basically, uh, he's spiking it with blood. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I think so. Mm -hmm. Sorry, reptilian races tend to be just a little bit more carnivorous, you know? <laughs> just a little bit. <coughs> Gotta get that savory meat mm -hmm. juice. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably like it's probably like bud that's been boiled or something you know so it's been cooked um uh, you know probably like it's like a spiced blood i'll say um so it's kind of weird but it has like the interesting with the fruit overtones and stuff too he'll mix it with some <laughs> of like the stuff from the drinks uh your fruity drink your tropical like uh breeze is really good uh it's got like fresh fruit um you know it, it has this like very interesting jungle taste you'd say Though you never tasted jungles, so I mean, <coughs> probably like. So now we have. Now you've tasted a jungle. I sip my drink and eat my leg. <laughs> Sometimes you could dip your leg in the drink and. <laughs> yeah, I mean. 
So do we want to check out those ruins? Everyone seems um, to be talking about them. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. Okay. Uh, you can head down the path towards the ruins. Um, the ruins themselves, um, you can see, like, it seems to have been some kind of settlement here. Um, definitely there is an area of it that's kind of open to the public, I would say. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot more of these, like, dinosaur-riding uh, guards around that seem to be patrolling the area. And there does seem to be, like, uh, small tours, plus an area that those people can kind of walk around. Um, you can see that there's areas that are kind of cut off uh, with, like, you know, fences and chains and stuff, where, like, some of them are like, if you want to check this out, you have to take the tour. And you're a little late at night for the tour. You're probably, at least coming in here, not going to be around for the tour. Yeah, it's fine. Probably not interested enough in everything. But it... Not for a tour, really. It'll be good. <clears throat> Alright. Uh, yeah, the ruins are very interesting. It seems to have, like, had, like, a centralized uh, building that seemed to have been some kind of temple... Uh, with a uh, kind of like a number of smaller buildings outside. The areas you can kind of visit are like the temple, uh, what looks to have been like a main thoroughfare uh, with a couple of buildings. Some of them have been like retrofitted to be open again, uh, some of the more intact ones, and uh, they have like little like gift shops in them. Uh, one of them is actually another a small cafe, uh, which has like... Uh, probably you could get like a local coffee or like little snacks that are like probably uh, representation of stuff. Uh, you do see more symbolism that seems to be of uh, Medusa again. More Medusa and more coffee. More Medusa, more coffee. <laughs> <laughs> India, are they called Medusas or Gorgons? Um, well, Gorgons are technically the metal-looking bulls, if we're talking D&D. &D. Got they, it. They, yep. That's why they usually just call them Medusas, to not confuse people, even though they are technically a Gorgon, if we're talking Greek mythology. Yeah, no, that's why I was like, I was like, I was just <coughs> trying to remember that. It's an odd question that I was like, I forget how that works in D&D. &D. But yeah, you're right. It I forgot works about to the confuse, Gorgon Gorgons. Yeah, it works to confuse the crap out of everybody. Yep. Uh. So, um, yeah, uh, like, you're still, as I said, into the evening time, so this is probably, like, five o'clock at night. Um, so it's like, you know, you've still got probably a couple hours that you can do stuff, but it certainly is, like, kind of, like, cutting down. Most of the tourists are set either settling into... Uh, if they've got a place on one of their, like, the larger ships that might have, like, rooms on them, or to one of the local inns back in the town area, uh, going out to the local dinner, you know. Uh, this place certainly seems safer than a lot of other areas. Like, y you could feel the wildness of the jungle, and this place definitely feels like it's been <coughs> sterilized to a degree. It's, it's a tourist trap kind of place. Yeah. Um, and it's probably around, yeah. see what's around, but that's about it. You know, yeah, the ruins like, are interesting. Um, they definitely have been like cleaned up of a lot of stuff. Um, they are old ruins. You probably don't know a lot about the culture that was here at all, um, but it's interesting to see them. Mm -hmm. Um, after a little while, uh, you probably finish up what you want to do there. Uh. Are you going to go to a specific, like, large-scale dinner somewhere? You could always get dinner from uh, Scrog on the boat, or you could just go to bed and have enjoyed your street food. i would probably just enjoy my street food. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you could probably pick up a couple more things, uh, some, like, local, like, various interesting delicacies. As I said, if you think of any, like, uh, you know, like, street vendory kind of area, there's probably, like, all kinds of, like, delicacies and stuff, uh, you know, it, it's it, it feels very, you know, um, people are selling lots of stuff in various places. But um, 
after you take your fill, uh, you can wander back to the boat and head back to rest again. And uh, I think if that's all you're going to do in this place, we'll take our second break. And uh, it's a little earlier but uh, than we did the last time, but it's still kind of on the basic time frame of us. And we'll uh, pop back in for uh, leaving uh, Nangalore and heading towards Lake Luau. In the next hour here, as we get into our last one. So again, uh, bathroom break, drink break, snack break, anything like that. You go ahead and do it. We'll be back in a little bit. <laughs> 